Similar to amplifiers, power supplies can be divided into the categories linear power supplies and switch mount power supplies. In fact, the linear power supplies are derived from the linear amplifiers, the amplifier classes A, AB, and B, and the switch mount power supplies are derived mainly from the class D amplifiers, but have also common properties with the class E and the class F amplifiers. Linear power supplies have the advantage that they don't need inductors and capacitors that can be very bulky and use some volume in a power supply. On the other hand, their efficiency is rather low and therefore they are only suitable for lower powers around 1 watt and less as they would require rather bulky heat sinks at higher output power levels and therefore their size advantage would be gone. Now most power supplies have an input capacitor and an output capacitor and they transform a source voltage, a DC voltage at the input into an output voltage which is applied across a load and that load is very often modeled as a resistor. In the specific case of a linear power supply, we have a voltage reference created here by a resistor and a Cnr diode and a power transistor, in this case a MOSFET. Now even though loads are often modeled as resistor, they are not static at all. Typically you would need different resistors to model different behaviors of a load. For example, if you supply a digital circuit like an FPGA, a field program or gate array, or a microcontroller, or any circuit like an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi, which are basically containing microcontrollers and CPUs, then their current consumption would change quite a lot based on what these circuits are doing. Now, modern digital circuits need supply voltages in the range of 5 volts, 3.3 volts, 2.7 volts, 1.8, 1.5 and the fastest circuits are down in the 1.2 volt supply voltage range. Those circuits can typically put into various different states. Some have hibernate states, deep sleep modes, standby modes and then they have the normal operation and sometimes their computational power is peaking and they require rather high currents from the supply. When those circuits are in modes like hibernate or deep sleep, they still require their supply voltage, but their current consumption is somewhere down in the micro and even nano ampere range, as they are only waiting on a user to press a button or send a Wi-Fi signal or getting turned on by any other means. During normal operation, they might consume somewhere in the milliampere up to an ampere range, and at high peak load, for example, if they're processing fast moving pictures and they need to calculate each single pixel on a high resolution screen, then their current consumption might go up into the 100 ampere range. Now in that range, when you're up at 100 amps, you would typically already use switch mode power supplies. Whereas the peak power of approximately a few watts can still be handled by linear power supplies. Now if the load changes, we call that load regulation of a power supply. If the load resistance for example drops, the output capacitor is starting to get discharged and therefore the voltage across that capacitor, which is the output voltage, also decreases. The voltage reference provided by the Cnr diode here is an extremely stable voltage and Kirchhoff's voltage law involves the gate source voltage of the transistor here and through the output voltage the loop is closed. So if V out is actually decreasing it acts as a negative feedback for the gate source voltage taking into account that the Cnr diode voltage here is a very stable voltage reference. 
That means in this case, the gate source voltage is rising. Now for the gate source voltage here across our transistor increasing, we have the transistor equation, which means the drain current through the transconductance of the transistor is actually rising as well, proportionally to the gate source voltage as the GM, the transconductance of the transistor is stable. With that rising current, the output capacitor is getting charged as the drain source current from the transistor is flowing into the output capacitor and providing the current to the load. That means the linear power supply is counteracting the change of the load resistance and is regulating its output to a stable output voltage. Similarly, for a changing input voltage, we call that line regulation. For example, if the input voltage is rising, that means for the given transconductance of the MOSFET, the drain current would be rising as well, and C out would get charged more than it got charged before. And that again means that the output voltage is about to rise. Taking into account the same loop as we used for Kirchhoff's voltage law, in the load regulation case here, we get the same equation and once again, the output voltage acts as a negative feedback to the controlling gate source voltage of the power transistor with the Sina voltage, the voltage across the Sina diode here, being stable. That causes the gate source voltage to fall and through the transistor equation of the MOSFET, the drain current is following that gate source voltage and is also falling. Eventually, that means that the output capacitor discharges and the output voltage is falling, which again is the counteraction to what we had before caused by the rising input voltage. And the operation is vice versa in both cases for an increasing load resistance or for a falling input voltage.